that moment he arrived. That was scary, man. That was like something out of X X Files. <laughs> Literally, there's a lot. Of, you hear those stories, and you see those uh, viral videos of like, well, this father's fainting. Have you seen those? Like, <laughs> literally, like fathers just dropping when they see their their kid come out. No, no. Oh, hello. He was like really purple, and he didn't breathe. And they were trying to get him to cough, and they're like, he's not making much noise, this one. And I was like, all right, <laughs> you know, maybe just don't say that. Like, you know, let's just get a, get, get some, some breath out of him. And he was just lying there, like purple. And then I remember his first cough. He coughed, and I was like, yes, his lungs are working. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Like, you haven't done that much. <laughs> you know, as, 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 a, as a male, you haven't done that much, but like it's it is just as powerful for you you know like when it's your your kid finding out that you're going to have a kid when your plan was always to be a career driven free independent person I couldn't, and I'm gonna be honest here, I couldn't deal with it. Um, I instantly packed my stuff, everything I had into my small Berlingo van and drove up to, to my mum's house. I suffer from a lot of anxiety. It's almost like I have to disconnect from these really, really emotional things in order to sort of keep myself going. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big shock. first three months I spent not really talking about it. But nine months is actually quite a long time to change your mindset. Yeah, I had to choose. I had to choose to, to, be, to be a dad and uh, quite rapidly as well. Is he kicking off, big boy? You having a kick? You sitting up by yourself? And now I'm here, <laughs> over two years down the line. And uh, to be honest, he, he's my world now. He's being chased. Run! <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As a man with a lot of psychological disposition, the first few days are horrendous. You're now living all those things that you worried about, living up to all those expectations, being this strong role model, a father figure and a figure for your family, you know, make sure that you, you have enough to support them while they're growing. Now I have to do all those things that I worried about not doing properly. <laughs> Are you sleeping? Wakey wakey! <laughs> <laughs> when did your anxiety start? So I started to develop an anxiety disorder, which was a mixture of, uh, I was diagnosed with GAD, generalized anxiety disorder and social anxiety disorder. Um, when I, I think I was like literally just turning 16 and I was with some of my friends that we were smoking weed in my house and uh, I remember this intense feeling like my head just crushing. It was like my whole world was ending. The trees were all coming in on me, the house was caving in. My friends' voices were, were blurs but it was almost like they were, you know, they were alien to me. I didn't quite understand what, what they were doing there. I was being sort of I felt, I felt like I was being attacked. And I remember I had to tell my, um, I think it was my stepmom or my mum, I said, get rid of them. Get them out, get them out of my house now. I can't be around these, these people. I can't be, like, I'm, a, I'm at risk. And I felt like I was dying. And ever since that day, it's literally like that one day, just that one day, every day since then has been, um, you know, 
a, a, a fe an intense feeling of fear. One time I stayed in my house for I think two or three months straight. I couldn't even go outside. I lived in the middle of nowhere as well. Like literally just beautiful fields and you know woods and everything, but I couldn't even set foot outside my front door. I went to the doctors and they said, yeah, you've, um, you've got GAD and social anxiety disorder triggered by abuse of cannabis. I went to all sorts of therapy and counseling and you know, CBT and all this stuff. And I started to learn a bit more about what it was and how it'd been triggered. But being a father with these anxiety disorders, with this depression is a whole different ball game. Ah, oh, you go. He won't stop until I get up, I tell you that. <sighs> okay, I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. Here. One more go. And then you're going to get down. Ready? <laughs> I feel that the system is set up to fail men. It's that disparity between the way that fathers are treated and the way that mothers are treated. For instance, mothers get a year paid maternity leave in the UK. Fathers get, I think, between one and two weeks. Like in Scandinavia, it's uh, 480 days split between both parents. You know, they can split it however they want. People say, oh, men can't suffer postpartum depression. They didn't go through the same, you know, biological changes or whatever. I can tell you now, men suffer from postpartum depression. We just don't talk about it very much. In terms of my, you know, anxieties, I'm okay, you know. I'm getting by, I'm, I'm doing a lot better now he's a bit older, but it's, it's always gonna be there and I'm just gonna have to accept that he's gonna grow up part of it. <laughs> yeah, fish. There really is nothing to be ashamed about in admitting that you have insecurities and sensitivities and you're not weak if you feel you can't cope. You're, you're just a human. I keep picking you up and then you want to get down again. I think it's very important to accept and understand and listen and question men about how they're feeling. <laughs>